everybody? Welcome back to Funcast, episode 17. Our guest today is the one and the only, my beastie, my bully, Iceberg Queen, Miss Mush SoCal. Thank Hola. you so much for coming on the cast, ma'am. What's up, Bubba? How you doing? Oh, you know, I'm just doing same old, same old. You know, I muted my phone, first of all. You didn't meet your dog. Yeah, well, good luck getting Cornbag to stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nut right, job. Muted. Muted. Um, but same, you know, same old, same old. Same shit, different uh, Saturday, I think it is, right? Saturday, yeah. I've been working a lot because everybody uh, felt the micro market tanking at the end of the year. And, you know, I got family to support, so I've been working. Are you doing product placement? Proudly sponsored by Babe Kombucha. That's nasty. No, I'm just kidding. This is just my homie. It, I'm, I'm doing my own product placement because I want to see my yeah. friends thrive yes that's the best part is seeing your friends succeed well uh, and on that note, i mean you kind of watched me yeah <laughs> you kind of watched me go from um i have a few tubs in my garage to like everybody's growing iceberg now and it's it's kind of wild i saw you going from i don't know how to use a spore swab to everybody's going to everybody's growing iceberg now how does that feel? <laughs> I feel so proud. You're like my little, my little Padawan, my young one. No, I'll my slow your roll. Slow your roll, buddy. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I could get you right there for sure. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> We're not doing this. I know you can beat me up or you can fight me. You. Yeah. It's going to be an hour of Miss Mush bullying me, whoever's listening uh -huh. to this episode. If you made it this far, this is the end. Yeah, yeah the end for Fung Street. It's just the beginning for the rest of us. Just kidding. We ain't fucking stopping, baby. So Never. speaking of Iceberg, how, let's talk about that, yeah? Yeah, let's talk about it. So um, when I first started, what was that? The Mothman? Did you see that? Yeah, I did. It was a fly. <laughs> That's on the cast. Everybody's going to see, like, you know, his creepy freaking hexagon eyes and shit. That show isn't me. It was the Mothman. But, uh, so when I first started growing, well, I guess I'll roll it back. 2020 was basically, like, the worst year of my life. Uh, I was supposed to get married, and two months before that happened, the dude just kind of, like, got on a plane and left and never came back. And then, um... Like two weeks after that, my kid's father killed himself. Um, so it was just a rough, really rough year and a lot that I wasn't ready to deal with. And uh, so one of my friends kind of suggested, hey, like, let's do some mushrooms. And so we did some mushrooms and uh, it kind of set the stage for a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I thought, well, let's grow our own mushrooms. Let's see how that goes. And um I think the second culture that I bought was called Titanic and uh, it was a multi-spore syringe from premium spores and started working with that. And it was giving me like, I was doing BRF cakes at the time and it was um, giving me like 50, 50 flushes and yeah, we know. <laughs> and so me and Fung Straight became friends. And so I asked him like, what's up with this? what's going on here? And he said, like, girl, let's clone it. And I said, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, but here, yep, it was literally that early on. And uh, so Bubba here sent me some plates. And, uh, and I poured in a still air box. Yep. So we were kind of working together and he told me here's how we're gonna do and here's how you clone and um started running iceberg tubs out i think i did a good four generations before um i was posting more fruit on instagram and people were like hey 
can I get this culture? Let me get this culture from you. And so it kind of started just doing the liquid culture through DMs. And then I got to a point where I was like, oh, I should start a website and started a website. And, and then it just spiraled, not in a bad way, in a, you know, upward, but it just turned into this thing that's uh, impacted every part of my life now. Jeez. And sue the tears. Yeah, I, I try not to cry a lot now. Like, I'm doing better with <laughs> it. Anybody see me at the Hypey conference in LA? I was crying in front of everybody outside. Yeah, no, I don't cry. I'm like okay with me. I'm having the best time of my life. I don't look like I'm sorry, that. Sorry, I have I to do it. No. She makes fun of me all the time. Every single day, without a doubt, you can count on Miss Mush uh, ripping me. Well, when you provide ample material, it's too hard to resist. Look at this. What are you talking about? But yeah, freaking A, Miss Mush, Miss Mush has worked iceberg to this friggin' culture that you see today. Well, she gives me like credit, but I just, I just sent her over a fucking agar dishes and answered a couple of questions she put in the work yeah but without the help we wouldn't be sitting here today talking about this so well it's a it's a lot to take in sometimes i do get emotional about it but you know i went from like literally the worst year of my life to like helping people and spreading the genetics around and getting you know hearing about people that it's healing and like, what more is there to life than that? Not much. Not much. A couple Not of vacations. Much. Maybe getting laid once in a while. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, you know. You know. If you don't yeah. know, you probably should. Yeah, you probably should. But uh, this has been pretty, pretty phenomenal. I never would have. I didn't go into this trying to sell genetics. That's for sure. I was just trying to I mean, eat. None of us really run into it to like sell anything, I think. I think the most successful people are the ones who it's happened organically and that it's kind of that path has chosen them, I guess, so to speak. Um, but, you know, now everybody and their mother's trying to get into the game and it's, it's tough out there. It's tough. It sure enough is. It, uh, it ain't easy, that's for sure. Not as easy as it was. I feel no. like a, like you know, like an OG. It's like back in my day, I used to be able to buy yeah, a bag of grains year. for a penny. Fifteen dollar. <laughs> I don't know what you're paying, but $15 for a fifty dollar bag for a bag of oats. What are you paying now? Twenty five or thirty. Yep. 50 pound bag of Milo. I'm paying like 27.99 now. Yeah. yeah. It's right. Yeah, and it's all within like a year. It's really gotten to the, it's even six months. It really just kind of got out of control and everyone it's, wants to it's blame hard out here for a pimp. Yep. It ain't easy being a gangster, but here we are. Somebody's got to do it. Yep. And you're doing it. Do it. You're doing it. No. Yeah, I just sell genetics. I'm definitely not a gangster, but, you know. We're all gangsters in our own beautiful way. I guess so. You got the Michael <laughs> Cowboy shirt on. Shout out, Mouth yeah, Michael uh, Cowboy. Cowboy. At the, um, yep. And apologies to them. when At the Spread the Spores event last year, they had their table set up in like a little area, and I was wearing a dress and I walked up, but there was a fan behind me. So the dress just went like this and I flashed like everybody sitting at the Myco Cowboy table. But I got a free Dude, shirt. That wasn't an accident. That wasn't an accident. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got my free shirt. We don't do beads at Myco festivals. We do shirts. Yeah, do t-shirts. I guess, I don't um, know. A lot of these, I mean, we are seeing, I was going to say there's not a lot of titties at the events, but we are, I think we're seeing more and more women getting involved, which is, Obviously, I'm all for it. I think it's great because it's Me always too. been like a boys game, you know? Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's just kind of like a, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I, it's cool to see women just doing all of the things, right? I guess it, we're, we're living in a pretty solid time right now where 
you know, equality. You know, girls are, we're taking up more space in the space. And I think that's really awesome. And not just, I mean, you're making you bank know. and you, you know, you're making bank. Well, I don't and, know about uh, that lately. <laughs> I mean, no, I, yeah, it's we're all, but you know, there was bills. You never made bank once. Yeah. It pays the bills and living in Southern California is, and having a family and all these fucking animals and it's a lot. It's fucking expensive. Yeah, it ain't easy being steezy, but somebody, you know, what's up? What's up? I know what it, I know what you do, but why? Let's let's tell the people what you do. So, you know, what do you oh. like to do when you're not doing this? When I'm not doing this, and I'm not working sixty hours a week, um, one of my biggest passions is rock hounding. Um, going out to the desert, studying the geology. I like to pick a spot and then I go read all the USGS uh, surveys and papers on that area and then go try to identify the things I read about in the papers and uh, collect rocks and be out in nature with my dog, corn man. And uh, yeah, that's one of my bigger passions. I've been trying to read more books lately, but the work corn is- Corn man has to be on, on the cast. Sorry to interrupt you. Funk? Oh, the dog? The man. The, the corn man. man? He's probably upset because he knows he's not allowed here in the lab. And so I would bet money oh. just laying outside the door. <laughs> I'll destroy <laughs> He's a mama's All boy. Right, no. can't, can't, have, can't have the bag in the lab. No Sorry, bag. Lab. Sorry, Corny. No mullets in the lab. Only mullets, my mullet. <laughs> I let you in. <laughs> I let you in my lab. <laughs> It's cool. It's it's. I'm blessed to have the space to have an extra bedroom in the garage to be able to do all this because, I mean, the, you've seen the garage. It's like a little fucking warehouse. Like, it, and it's yeah. all. Like, I think a lot of people. I think this is a good thing to talk about. Where you know, a lot of people, I think, think that we all have these like top tier medical grade hospital labs and that we're working in like fucking X-Men science shit. And we're and all like renting like, warehouses and shit. And it's just not that way. I It's very much to, not a thing. To this day, uh, my flow hood is a two and a half by two. That's it. That's all I work with four square feet doing all the stuff that I do. So I think you don't have to have the biggest flow hood. You don't have to have the most expensive equipment. You, you don't, don't have to have a flow hood. You have to have passion and you have to have love for the craft. And that's going to take you as far as you want to go. I mean, some things have to get scaled up. You got to get a decent uh, sealer. You know, there's some things, but you don't, yeah, you don't need all that to go far. And I mean, look at where I'm at now, largely supporting my family you know, off of Myco and four square feet of flow hood. I just really, really fucking love what I do. And it shows in your work. Thank uh, you. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, now gosh, we have Gemini man. out there. So yeah, yeah. Gemini, it's gonna, so, you know, we've got it, we've got it going and uh, mm -hmm. it's not quite, uh, it's still colonizing, but yeah, Got a Gemini head start was before y'all. So Gemini um, was an attempted ghetto swab cross of the April Reaver in Je or, uh, Iceberg. And when I sent the of first what call, again? I'm sorry. It was Iceberg and April Reaver. Oh, uh, okay. So, but the thing is, April Reaver is pigmented, whereas Iceberg is an albino, obviously a true albino. But the, the child of the two came out albino, and that's actually not likely to happen if one of the parents are pigmented because albinism is such a recessive gene. It's like easily switched off. Um, so the fact that the child was albino, I was kind of like suspicious. I was like, ah, I don't know. So I did send it for some cursory sequencing and all the genes they looked at matched iceberg. So I wasn't willing to call it a cross. And that's what I think I see a lot of people doing now is 
they do something and something comes out and they just automatically call it a cross, even though it probably doesn't look like it, but everyone's such in a rush to call something a cross. And I think it's kind of muddying the waters a little bit, so to speak. But yeah, so anyway, I didn't have proof that it was a cross, even though it tested, iceberg typically tests around 1% or 0.9, Gemini's testing at 1.4. So that's a big jump. So, and that's, well, that's higher than both of the parents. Like, 8.4 Revert doesn't even test that high. Hmm. So it begs the question, what did I do to it? I think maybe we lit up some pathways or lit up some genes that, yep, it's the magic of the process, really. We did something, maybe just affected the iceberg genes so we have a new phenotype. And that's where I kind of left it, is that Gemini is just a new iceberg phenotype that was derived from a failed cross attempt. And You heard yep. it here on Funcast, baby. So my failure to cross this created this whole new isolation that people are loving it. Um, so embrace the failures, right? Absolutely. And also mm -hmm. on that note, what's up? Like, you know, so it's like, it's, a, it's an iceberg variation. It's a different strain of iceberg. Right. Yeah. A new a phenotype of iceberg. It would be a different strain technically. Right. Or I guess phenotype, well, no. but like you, because you're clone, right? So each mushroom is a strain in the tub and then you're growing the variety. Right. So what my question has always been, you know, as far as like, so it's like potency, each mushroom has probably has its own potency. It's all yes. like, you know, you have like 25 mushrooms, then it's like, that's 25 mushrooms with individual levels of uh, psilocybin or and psilocin. And the other secondary topic. tryptamines too. I mean, you have a whole tryptamine profile that you look at between isolations. You, you know, I you have. Know, I, I don't really know too much about testing, to be honest. Well, I'm very. Let me still, let me touch on this. So I have Ooh, green cap please. thrasher, right? So my green cap thrasher, I have it tested. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a little under one percent. But when I did the squat thrasher. So the Thrasher bombs, those ones yeah. tested positive for originacin. The original Thrashers that originacin? I found, originacin, I believe is how you say it. And from what I was told, I think it was uh, Stabin, McDavin, and Wumbo have talked about this, that, that they think that's responsible for the wood lover's paralysis that happens sometimes. So uh, I've never but, really, you know, even... I've never had wood lovers or even experienced them or seen them. Right. Yeah. Same here. That's why I had to be educated by other people. And uh, mm. but how is it that the original doesn't test positive for originacin, but this clone that I took of it and made into thrasher bombs that tests positive for originacin. Like, so some there's, there's things that got to be switched on and off by us doing these things that, so you can have two that are like brothers, but they have different tryptamine profiles. And I think that's really fascinating. That is pretty fascinating. And it's like, would that come up the same on every test? Like, That's the question. So I, would have, I would have to have it tested again, maybe at another lab, you know? So at that point, you would have to like sit, probably have like a mushroom or a fruit that's like, you know, damn near zip dry. And then you can send that sample to five different labs mm -hmm. because it's the exact same fruit but it would just be tested via different labs. So it's like you would have to have a mushroom that is large enough for you to get multiple samples out. Which Thrasher could do that, but uh, Those I- bobs were dropping them, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. They're monsters. But- uh, bomb, Thrasher bomb could do that easily. I think, I don't know, because I've talked to people who they've actually run tests where I think it was um, Mycozine, Tomas, we chatted about. They ran tests, testing fruit from the same tub, but from different areas of the tub, and they tested slightly differently. So you can even have fruit that are from the same tub that are doing slightly different things based on well, like- That's their what routine. I was saying. Right. So like there's so many variables that I don't know, even like saying something- is tested, I think it leaves room for questions. Yeah, I know. It's still, I feel like it's still so, like, 
new in yeah. there's still it's so early in the science right now where like <laughs> we're just kind of like throwing out the numbers that we can get right now you know and, and that's what the cool thing about science is because these are all being recorded so it's like down the line the numbers are already going to be there and then people are going to be able to reference this and then also you know it's just going to be cool this whole little log of things but it's just i would a like shame. to see more sorry one more thing i would like to see what more free like uh like i want to see the the results of these cups like right. somewhere in it like a directory or something most of them make the data available i do have some spreadsheets i could share with you um i just think it's a shame that the medicine's been demonized for so long by our leadership and whatever administrations we have um that we could be so much further along in our understanding scientifically of all of these things but it's been repressed and it's been held back and um it's just sad because nature gave us this as like a gift to be the best versions of ourselves and the you know the regime we live under for the last couple hundred years is basically said this is evil and it's bad and you're going to go to prison for it um and that's and i don't you know still it makes go me to angry. prison for it people do go to prison <laughs> for it people still go to prison for weed and absolutely. that's absolutely shameful we should be embarrassed we live in a country that allows that but you know i digress there's probably a lot we should be embarrassed of as a country to be honest with you i feel like for the most part we can only really do what we can do as individuals uh, i think if more I mean, people cared you know but it's a big burden to actually care about all the shit that's wrong because there's a lot wrong and that can weigh heavy yeah. on your mind you know 100 percent. it's a lot it's it a, is lot a lot while dealing with everything. Just, you know, first world problems. Yeah, I'm raising a 16 year old. You want to talk about personal problems? <laughs> oh, I said first world problems. Oh, there's some personal problems, but. Whoa. Got plenty of those, that's for sure. Me too. Good golly yeah, gosh, it's what we all do, right? That's why we get along. Brother. Yeah, brother. Cheers to that. Mm -hmm. Um, well, like, what's up? What's your, I want to like, what's your most prized rock? You got a prize, like, I want to uh, see your most prized rock or like. Rocks are in my bedroom where the real magic happens. But, uh, just, he hates hearing. <laughs> he has to you guys know how much I hear about that's magic all the time. He has to hear about the worst shit imaginable. And I have, to give her, I have to give her advice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever take it, but uh, yeah. I don't know my most prized rock. I'm pretty big on like catch and release now. Like if I find a rock, I'll take a picture of it and then just put it back because I ended up with like thousands of pounds of rocks in my garage and I had to go put them back in the desk. <laughs> like that's yeah. counterproductive, you know? So. I try to not hold them, but I do have a few that I do really like. They're really cool. I have, you guys know what perlite, the stuff they use in gardening where it's light and light, like light, little white foamy rocks. Perlite yeah. doesn't actually grow like that naturally. That happens when you heat perlite to high temperatures and it pops almost like popcorn. But I have some <laughs> rocks that have, yeah. So I have some rocks that have like a common opal but they have a layer of perlite around it which is like a clear amber kind of um that one's kind of cool i have some quartz i have some other stuff um but i haven't had a whole lot of time to go out to the desert recently that's for sure um i wanted to say i guess it's like we're probably g25 minutes in the fucking Enthanogen Expo was a blast. Yes. It was wonderful seeing you. That uh, was phenomenal. Uh, I the, the turnout that we got from everybody, I mean, we sold hundreds of tickets. We had vendors. We had people who were speaking that their parents were there to see them speak. Um, it was just, we were so blessed by the turnout from the community to come support what we're trying to do and 
we made new friends. We got, you know, got to hang out and smoke and, you know, be with all these people that we talk to all the time online, but you know, we're all over the country. We had people, Michael Pungs came from England. Like, yeah, it was awesome meeting them. Yeah, oh, they're cool. super cool. I just, and we're already getting ready for more. We're talking about the next one already. Um, we have some big plans in the future to kind of spread our wings a little bit more and uh, do something wanna, a little different. Huh? Anything you want to, any, tell the people um maybe in the future you might plan on bringing a sleeping bag um oh. we are discussing some tradition like the traditional format and a non-traditional format for you know um where it might be more involved outdoors with foraging and um more connected Ooh. with nature and not in a building yeah that sounds mm -hmm. exciting that's it's very exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. We, Hopefully that's where it like, goes. It's so much work. And, you know, I was working so much this last expo. I really have to give credit to Bobby Agar boy. He took on a lot more responsibility with this last one because I was working so much. And um, he just, I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> He's the best Shout part. Out Bobby. He's awesome. Shout and he's so Bobby. he's a wonderful Bobby. person. We love you, Bobby. Love you, Bobby. Yes. Agar boy. Agar or, boy. I don't even know. It's Agar. Agar. I don't say Agar. And you know, here's my <laughs> thing. More people should just call it media because I don't use agar. I use jelly gum. So why are we calling everything agar? Like it's not. Well, it's I use agar and I've never eaten an apple. I'll tell you what, I eat apples. You can suck it. Uh, gel and gum. Nice. <laughs> but yeah. you know, not everybody uses not that. Same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I, I used to hate it actually, because I don't know, it's probably just a coincidence, but a few years ago, I think I did try to do gel and gum twice in a row and both of the bottles blew up in the pressure cooker and I blamed it on the gel and gum and I hated gel and gum for a long time and I haven't had an issue since. So isn't you know, gel and gum based like made from like, like bacillus? That I don't know. We should talk to tip of the cap about that. He's who I get my premix from. I don't know. I thought I, I thought I saw that so, to be wrong. Well, that's uh, it's bacteria. Like, what? No, nothing. Um, yeah. Nice. You're so I've cool. I've seen fantastic results with gel and gum. All of the plates are eating it up. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Well, so, okay. like, what's your uh, preferred media, what's your preferred media nutritional base? Question mark. So, the, the one, the premix that I use is PDYG. So, potato, dextrose yeast gel and gum so i guess that would be potato and then dextrose but for a long time when i was mixing my own i was doing lmeya so light malt light malt extract yeast um and agar of course so i thought about pouring a few plates of that up again just because it does help for your cultures if you switch the recipe occasionally so they don't get lazy LME what is lme yeah lme is alpha like it is superior i think i used to especially i used to do my um liquid culture with lme but uh when i, I switched to sorghum syrup which it makes sense because you know they're going from liquid culture at least here onto milo which is also sorghum so it's like helping it to that create those sense. enzymes you know, before it gets there don't die on camera, please. Too much of a liability. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I I used to make like for a while I made grain water plates. And uh, no, because the mycelium has to learn, and this is what I learned from Basidium's uh, class. Shout out to Bass. Uh, 
that the mycelium needs to create enzymes to digest whatever uh, nutrition you give it. So if it's already created yeah. these enzymes to digest sorghum, then as soon as it gets on grain, it's just going to jump because it already has cre is creating those enzymes. So it's just ready to go. It's just like us, like as human be Always. beings, Always. Unless right? it's past like, 10 p.m. You know? and then I'm not ready to go. Oh, my God. I'm talking about my st our stomachs. <laughs> oh, so I handle that. Don't worry. <laughs> um. Yeah. It's been it's, uh, so. If you use my cultures, then it would be best to use Milo or sorghum for the grain because that's what they know. Obviously, they're going to run well on anything, but if you want to give it that little extra jump, put it on you know Milo, and you're going to see the results. Do you feel like training your cultures? is to like your specific grains and substrate is like significantly like better i guess than not which how, how much of a difference say it makes i think training your cultures is more important than the genetics you're running and i'm willing to say that because i've seen plenty of people that their first you know run of iceberg because they're doing it on cbg they're doing it with oats, whatever, whatever. It's not phenomenal, but they clone it and they run it again. And guess what? The next flush is phenomenal. And then they try to rename it and call it their new ape cut. But I digress. All right. I'm going to say it. I'm bringing it up. No, I'm don't bring it up. The no names. Ethically sourcing your genetics. Try to support the people who are doing the work, you know. Try to find out whose work it is and try to go support them. But I've kind of come to terms with the fact that, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. There's going to be these vendors who buy cultures from us and bulk them up and sell them. And it sucks. It sucks to see it when you, you know, like Gemini iceberg spent a year and a half on them, you know, and then people have them on their website, but I am learning right. now to just, because those kind of people, they don't have what it takes. You know, it's like copying the sauce, but it won't taste the same. You know, it's not about the passion of cultivation for them. It's not about, you know, getting the medicine to people and improving what we have. It's just about making a quick dollar. And I think eventually in the long run that that shows in their work and that that shows in the results they get. So, you know, try to support people because some of us put in a lot of time and a lot of sweat and tears and all this stuff to get this stuff to you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it's the nature of the beast, I guess, is that if you're successful, then people are going to copy it, right? Yeah, of course. But also, yeah, yeah I see the guys, you know, yeah, definitely do your research. Um, try to find out where the genetics are coming from. There's a lot of people who have cultures of other people's out there. Um, but also, like, on that note, there's a lot of people who are unable to do genetic work, right? There is, like, Correct. levels to this shit. And it's, like, you can only go so far with somebody's culture before it starts acting weird. Um, and Sometimes anybody who, knows. you know, I'm sorry? Sometimes I think the culture even knows, you know, that's being exploited and that it, it won't run, you know? So well, I tell that with people who, like, come to me about bulk grows you know how mm -hmm. many people come to me about bulk grows and they're like i'm trying to do this amount of work in this amount of square feet and uh i you know i want to make this much money and i'm like dude you know i feel like first off you got to learn how to do one of these before you do a thousand correct and then second off the mushrooms no yeah. and uh, it's never like, I never really even say it, but then like a lot of these people fail. And I think it's just because the mushrooms know and they're, that they're being exploited mm -hmm. in a negative way. And you see, you know, these bulk attempts just go to shit. Um, yeah. And you gotta be able to crawl before you can walk. You can't, you can't blow out a warehouse with something you don't understand. You're going to spend, you're going to lose your ass, you know? So, but everyone's eager to jump in and scale up and um, it's disingenuous. It's not, 
it's not the reason to do it. Yeah. Uh, none of us started doing this, at least, you know, make money. Yeah. Just, you know, to make money. I, I didn't even, I was just curious as to how mushrooms were grown. Yep. I just wanted to heal. <laughs> I just wanted a trip. <laughs> Now I just no. want to trip. I mean, we all have healing. I didn't realize still. that it was healing at the time. But the um, medicine knows what we need, I think. And even if that's not overtly what we're going for, it'll find a way to get the message across, you know? Oh, yeah, it does. And I think that's where a lot of people think that they're having a bad trip um, that comes from. Because yeah. it's not... It's only doing what you're, you know. What you need. That's what you, what need, you need at the time. Like, mm -hmm. I it's mean, I consider yeah. it, it's like the universe giving you a stern talking to, you know. Like you It's like the things that are just like, that are deep down inside bothering you. But yeah. Those things are the ones that like bloom. And I, expl I explain that to a lot of people. And that's when they're like, well, I don't really, really want to do that. And I'm like, but why not? Like that thing obviously is clearly bothering you to the point where you're like, oh, a chance, brother. Yeah, it's like when you have like, if you get a room in your house, it gets dirty and out of control and then you just don't want to fuck with it because it's just too dirty and out of control. And it's like, well, we got to get in there and clean this shit out because it's going to affect the rest of the house eventually. Um, yeah. And I have substantial, you know, trauma from my childhood and um, abuse and stuff like that that. I think to this day, I'm still working on sorting out, but like for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm more at peace with a lot of things. Um, I'm okay with a lot of things because you can't change it. But I think all of us are still searching for something. I'm not like going to say I'm totally enlightened or, you know, all healed and all that good stuff. But um, without mushrooms, I feel like I'd be in a much worse place mentally. I agree. And I think, think it's not even necessarily when I just say mushrooms, just the mushroom itself, but more so just this whole entire thing. I don't know where I'd be without have, you know, the community. You know what I mean? I don't know where I'd be. Imagine if we were friends, right? This is like a multiple year friendship. That. With Who would I Couldn't bully? <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like a crazy, yeah, it's like I... I would probably be in New York right now doing something silly or uh, not productive. Not good, tell you that. Yeah. yeah, I um yeah, I have a history of addiction and doing shit that I shouldn't and um I do think mushrooms have helped me kind of stay away from or at least to remove me from that version of myself and step back outside of myself and say like hey, this is a not a good trait that you have. Um, maybe we should avoid some of these things. And that's, I think mushrooms are so great to just remove you from those worst parts of yourself and pull you away and say, hey, let's separate from this. Let's get rid of this. So it's yeah, kept me and like, And it also puts a spotlight on it, right? It like yes. removes you from it, puts a spotlight on it, and it makes you look at it. Mm-hmm. It's I'm like, grateful. I'm grateful for it. Cause I, yeah, I, like I said, I do have a past. I, I was a tweaker for a while and living out of my famous. car. Oh, cause of the cops thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was famous there before I was famous here. Let me just say, um, criminal from day one, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was in a bad place back then too. I mean, look at your hand tattoos. I know I'm basically a fucking... <laughs> domestic terrorists at this point uh, <laughs> fortunately it, it's interesting because i thought Let's for sure me. that like having hand tattoos would keep me from having to go back to work in an office and the second place i interviewed with for tax season was like yep you're hired you're gonna meet all of our clients and you know you're gonna sit with all of them and um times are changing right, so times are changing and plus you're a wizard what you do i feel like people you can't even fucking it's like if the whole world had hand tattoos would they be like Proud to prawn. Yeah. No. It's like, yeah. Well, and it, the thing is, I work with a lot of like older folks, like, you know, grandmas and, you know, and they're so sweet and they don't treat me any different. You know, they're really sweet to me and kind. They don't judge those things. So I think 
I don't know, times are changing and people are understanding that there's more value like of what's in here than, you know, whatever art I have on my body. Yeah, in here. It's what's in here. <laughs> that was, that was it, both good. What's here and it's in here. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had a brain. <laughs> if I only had a brain. <laughs> oh, good golly gosh. What a day it's been. I'm cooking grains. I'm cooking grains all day. I have, oh gosh, this is my first Saturday I've had off in two months. So I slept in as much as Cornbag would let me and uh, got started on my chores. We got some micro work still, but I don't know. A nap sounds really, really nice right about now. Oh, you nap. You nap too much lately. Hey, you, I you am work old. And nap. I am old. I am allowed. You're not to even. Me. You're not old. I'm almost forty. Let me have. Would never guess. Twenty years be... old. Oh, you're my favorite now. <laughs> Brownie points. You yeah, gotta take a note. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna bully you, but yeah, I do appreciate that. <laughs> oh man, I'm here for it. It's always fun. Right. It is. Get to talk some it's shit to somebody. With love. With love. Yeah. Always. It's just... You know, yeah, bullying with love. We'll call it yeah. that. But don't <laughs> don't bully people, guys. It's not nice. Yeah, yeah. No. That's not cool. And no. you'll be um, you'll get a thumbs down from me if you do that. Hundred uh, percent. What are you like? What what's up? You got some any projects? So I know Gemini was a thing. You trying anything new or? Fun and exciting. I am. So let's see. I'm reworking the full revert because eight full revert has typically been a little bit of a tougher uh, culture to grow. It's a little more fickle. So I ran it ahead two more generations and it's flushing a lot fuller, less aborts. Um, so I'm getting ready to put that to liquid culture and re release eight full revert. Um, I'm also working on another cut of Gemini that basically before I released Gemini, I got down to two cuts and I released. Uh, it was Gemini B as Gemini, but I still had Gemini H, I believe. H. And that one, Gemini H, which I'm probably going to call Virgo. Um, but I'm working on that just to see if it's phenotypically. It, it, the last run, it looked phenotypically a little different. So I'm going to keep running that one. Um, a couple more KSSS and BDPE taking back to Spore. So I pulled those off the website just so I could work them a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. Now I have people requesting that I cross things with other things. So I have some serial dilutions to get started on. <laughs> they want to see a uh, steel mag crossed with some stuff. So I think I'm going to play with that soon. Steel mag is such a beautiful gold chair. Shout out to doc. Shout out doc. Doc dang seeds. Doc's dank seed he, bank, exactly I think, it. is what it is now. He's the Where original. Huh? What's his, oh, what's his uh, tag? It's Doc's dank seed bank, I think. Or oh. Doc's dank seeds, something like that. Uh, he was at the expo as well, which was like, no, you know, nobody's gotten Doc to come out, but Doc came and hung out with us, and it was awesome to meet him. Um, but yeah, he was the one who created Steel Mag. So now I have people, someone requested that I try to cross Steel Mag with some other stuff. So we're going to see how that goes. It's a long process though. because you're So we're talking about this right now. And I'll probably do the serial dilutions in the next month or so. Nobody's going to see results from this for another six months to a year. You know, it takes a long time to do these things, to do them right, not to just you know, pair two monos and release it as a cross without even growing it out. You know, like some of us, yeah. you know, I, I have crosses. I run them for several generations to make sure we've got something different. Um, and when I'm not sure I had it sequenced and they told me it's not a cross and I said, okay, it's not a cross. And I was all right with that. I think a lot of people need to learn to be okay with that. If someone says it's not a cross, it's okay. You don't have to still try and release it and call it a cross, you know, just release it and don't call it a cross. <laughs> so, yeah, say it's a failed cross, you know, whatever, whatever. It's just or whatever. You know, I feel like it's like, all right, so I'm starting to see like 
they, they, there's this whole thing of like now you're there's like the reverts right and i mm-hmm. i think the whole revert is just like it's like so people have the mushroom and then they found an albino and then they mm-hmm. had the albino and then through the albino reverted and then they cloned it and now it's back to not albino right right um, but you don't but yeah so it's, it's like it's a diff it's like almost as if it's an isolated culture of the original correct or a new phenotype of the original and that's what i'm working on right now i had an iceberg revert that was a pin the size of a grain of rice in an iceberg tub that was pigmented and i was like oh okay because iceberg is pretty stable it does throw out a lot of different phenotypes but as a culture it's very stable and so I pulled this little pin off, put it on media, and now that's what I'm working on is Titanic. But it's still Thai Leap of Yai. I mean, that's what it is at the end of the day, but it's so different, you know, typically from the original Thai Leap of Yai from which I got Iceberg, that it's it's different. It's bigger. It's doing different traits, different things. So it's fun to kind of chase the genetics as they evolve, even in your own lab, you know, the, the strain can evolve, which I think is yeah. pretty neat. That is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I guess I never really thought about it until I just said what I said. In that time is when I you really genuinely just thought about this. So I just listened to you and I was like, all right, I'm going to go in my brain. See, I told you we didn't need to have a script. <laughs> There's no script. These things, full, nope. full disclosure, everybody, these are not scripted. Never not nope. once. Nope. And I've been behaving for the most part. Yeah, you're doing a you're a, you've been a good girl. Oh, don't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> That's uh, inappropriate. That's inappropriate. What? No yeah, way. Yeah, y'all could see our conversations outside of here. We'd probably be on yeah. a list or something. I'd like no way. Sometimes I gotta like I most of the time it's me. Like, listen, simmer down. You're like, I don't want to hear about wrong. that. Am I I'm wrong? Like, I gotta tell you about this. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. The oh, joy gosh. of being friends with the oversharer. I just gotta tell somebody, you know. But it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Whether you love it or not. <laughs> Send help. Yep. Right. I don't know. It's been wild. It's crazy to think that. Four years ago, I was running little BRF cakes for the first time, and now look, we're here on doing a podcast together. And I thought you said forty years ago. I was like, God damn, no, lady. you were you were just but a thought. That wasn't even a thought. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, four years ago. Gosh, four years ago, I was also probably five years ago. I was running BRF cakes. Hmm. Shout out, no, Professor no, BRF. Yeah, you never yeah. Stop say, no shame on BRF cakes. They, they're fine. I think they're great. I think it's a really cool way to like you know, make it fun. So I think people need to keep my more accessible too. And it's so dope. You could just like that's the best way to inoculate with spore, in my opinion. I feel yeah. like. Has anyone like, grown Thrasher on BRF cakes? That would be hilarious. Like the fruit would if be bigger than have, the cake. It'd probably be the press. Hmm. Well, if anybody has grown thrashers on BRF cake, send me pictures to Miss MMSC Labs. I want to see it. Yeah, you yeah. know, let's give you let's give you a little shout out. What do you got? What what's your website? Your Instagram? You got your Patreon? So we got Instagram, um, MMSC Labs. And then uh, my website is mmsclabs.com. I have a Patreon as well. Um, I stay off of Facebook, that's for sure. I really, I mean, I kind of just stay on Instagram because I have, even now, you know, maybe once a month or so, I have someone message me and be like, oh, you know, I saw about you on Reddit. And I don't go on Reddit, but I guess people speak of me on Reddit. And I, they speak well of me. They speak nicely, of course, but it's just funny how, you know, I just, I don't have time to go on there too, but people are still talking about it. it that's cool. You know, 
the whole this whole community is pretty much like the same community just in like different platforms for the most part yeah. Yeah. and some people have like their circles and their group of friends but that's why the expo <laughs> is so beautiful is like it brought everybody out in person to like meet each other and like smoke a bowl together and chat about stuff and i mean itw came we had there's so bass yeah, there really like cool hanging out with drew drew yeah. bass and the crew we were all just chilling on the couch when uh the the, the last panel when alan and uh joey prime, yeah prime crowd pays botany does it who is i call him a mycology's favorite botanist because we all love that guy oh he's so awesome yeah, well, who doesn't love a foul mouth motherfucker? So he's awesome, but like he's also a very highly intelligent. Yes, well, I found a lot. That's what you see in this community a lot is a lot of really, really, really smart people that are applying their intelligence to something they actually love. And I think that's where Myco has a foot up over a lot of other industries. You have people who are so fucking intelligent, but they have a passion for it, and they're really like committed to this. And I think that's what's gonna give Myco maybe a chance over cannabis or something. Not that people in cannabis aren't smart, but I just see a passion here with the Myco people that I don't see anywhere else. Yeah. I think it's also so new, right? It's like, it's like everything else we've already seen, like this is like the washed up, you know, there's already the billions have been made. So now it's just like this like cog in the machine where this is, this is kind of the beginning of that, you know, yeah. which is kind of unfortunate to say yeah. because that's, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, arguably the beginning of the end. And we can't really, Maybe. you know, we can only do whatever we can do to like prolong that from happening. But, I, you know, the wheels are turning. And I think the way we're going to avoid that is really taking this stance of, um, teaching people to grow their own medicine because cannabis is different. You need light, you need timers, you need whatever, whatever, whatever mushrooms. You don't need those things. And I think by keeping it in the hands of the people who are consuming it and teaching people to grow their own, we can try to keep, you know, big pharma and all these things out because we don't depend on them. We can grow our own medicine. And that's where we need to fight. I think the hardest is for our right to do that because that's, what's going to keep us, you know, you know away from that big corporate money because that's what we don't want we don't want big corporate money they can shove it up their ass we're not interested yeah. and you know and it's not just medicine i think like it's also food right mushrooms yeah. are nutritious nu nutritious like got it um i can't <laughs> they're highly highly nutritious and yeah. uh they taste they're, good. They're, Minus yeah, they're white not... button mushrooms. White button mushrooms are garbage. <laughs> don't hate. Don't hate. I think I'm not hating. I'm just stating facts. Right. And they're they're able to be cultivated by people in small amounts. You don't need to do a whole room. You can do a few fruiting blocks and provide your own food. And um, for I like think, weeks. Yeah. Right. And I food think that medicine. empowerment is important. And I think I agree with that. And the whole, I think, so <clears throat> the, this community, right? We're all, so there's something in my life that I've realized, right? Then there's like the, the, the groups of people, arguably, right? There's communities of people. And then there's like sub communities that like a lot of these people are into that are in that category. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a lot of people in the Myco community, we also garden. We also grow cacti, you know, yeah, yeah. we like, well, some of which we might not even know until one of us shares that. Right. Right. Um, and like, even in like skydiving, it's like a lot of people do like they're, you could almost guarantee like a skydiver has a, has a pair of rock climbing shoes, you know, and yeah. it's like extreme sports and like the extreme sports do the extreme sports. So it's like, um, kind of cool. And I think that's see, one like, thing the medicine has taught me all that. is like, we are the universe. The universe is us. We are all connected. We are all one. Our energy is all one energy. And 
I think the sooner people accept that and realize that, you know, we're, we're all human and we all have these things that connect us, we could stop, people could stop being so hateful and maybe um, embrace growth and evolution of character and oneness and unity. Because when that happens, then we become very dangerous to the powers that be, right? The powers at large. When we stop fighting with each other and we stop bickering about Trump or Biden or this or that or the other and realize that like we could work together to make this country and this world better. Um, that's the most dangerous thing I think to our leadership. And that's something we need to pursue as people. I, yeah, you know, it's like, I guess it, the whole government system and stuff you really go on and on about that. And I'd uh, almost rather not, I won't. I'll spare um, you, but the punk rocker in me is like, you know what? Long story short, fuck Yeah, this your mohawk's up. showing right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the dog <laughs> would have a better mohawk than me, to be honest. He has a better mullet than you. Yeah, that's he for really sure. does. It's natural, too. <laughs> oh, natural. Wall, corn bag. He's more popular than I am. Gosh, I wish you, you know, if you, if you had little corn bag babies, I would definitely have, like, would love to adopt one. Little but corn it's muffin. probably not going to happen, unfortunately. No, I think we're going to get his nuggets taken off after tax season. He's kind of a bully. Yeah, his yeah. nuggets. That's not the nuggets. <laughs> Poor corny. <laughs> It'll be all right. He's a good yeah, boy. Yeah, it's for the best to live longer. You know, there's a lot of dogs that need love that are in the shelter already, too, so. For sure. I don't know, Bubba, that nap is sounding real no. nice right about now. All right, one more question. Well, No, I will not marry questions. you for the last time. Damn it. All right, three more questions. <laughs> um, One, are you going to any other festival this year? Ooh, so I am. I'm going to Morel Fest in Gettysburg, which Uncle Fungus is a part of that. And the... So am the I. I forgot. Guess who's going to Philly, baby? Us. We're going to Philly finally. Now, I'm not going for an Eagles game. I wish there was Eagles games when we were out there, but um, I get to go to Philly. So it's going to be awesome. I'm going to hopefully link up with PGT and eat some cheesesteaks with them because yes. I'm so stoked. I'm, and then I'm thinking uh, I would love to make it to Jacob DeVicio's Oklahoma festival this year. Um, I may, I'm thinking about driving out there with my dog, but we'll see how it shakes out. Okay. Okay. I like it. That's cool. I want to go to both of those things as well. So I'll see you there. You want to drive with me, Bubba? Um, possibly. Might be we'll fun. talk about that later. <laughs> um, and I guess the last question would be, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, like extra chocolate, all chocolate, fudge chocolate, all chocolate. You heard it. <laughs> Extra fudge chocolate, all chocolate fudge chocolate. So if you want to send gifts, I know it doesn't ship well, but I guess it's a thought that counts, right? Send her some chocolate, ladies and germs. <laughs> I'm still just a girl at the end of the day, you know? I'm just a girl. I want to fly away. <laughs> I know where you <laughs> yeah, let's not quit well, our day jobs. Yeah, you know, um... I'm not gonna. I love no, this shit. Can't afford it. And this is the best job that like anybody could ever have. Amen to that, sister. Mm -hmm. Well, en enjoy your nap. Thanks for coming on the cast and, you know, giving me an hour of your so oh so precious time. Finally. I know. I've been trying <laughs> to get her to come on the podcast for so long. Just a busy but woman, it's okay. you know? She's doing her thing. She's hustling. She's making that making that what money to pay them bills and that's more important yes sir. Uh, thank you 
You have a wonderful nap. Talk to you later. Love you too, fam. Bye. Bye.